As Mr. Bowman here, we're looking at 2.7 calculus methods in this video, and we're going to focus on all the merit questions that came up in that 2017 exam. We're going to start off with question 13, which is from the website. Question number 13. Uh, find the equation of the tangent for this graph at the point 2, 18. So we've got a lot of information, but the first and most important one is that original function, which is 6 plus 14x minus 2x cubed. The other thing to note is we are interested in the tangent, and the equation of the tangent is y is equal to mx plus c. And how these relate is that m stands for the gradient. So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate our original function to find out the gradient function. We can then go ahead and calculate m or the gradient part of that equation. So let's differentiate. So we've got f dash x. That's going to be equal to the 6 cancels itself out. So we've got 14 minus 6x squared. Now we just need to figure out, well, what's the x value? At what point are we trying to find out the gradient? And that's where the coordinate they've given us comes into play. We know that x is equal to 2 and that y is equal to 18. So we're going to substitute 2 into this equation. So f dash 2 is going to be equal to 14 minus 6 times 2 squared. That's 14 minus 24. That there is equal to negative 10. So we know the gradient when x is equal to 2 is negative 10. So that's our m value. We're now going to jump back to the y equals mx plus c. We actually know the y value, which is the 18. We know the m value, which is negative 10, and we know the x value, positive 2. That leaves one letter c. We're going to substitute, and then we're going to solve for c. So 18 is going to be equal to m, which is negative 10, times 2 plus c. That's going to be 18 is equal to negative 20 plus c. I'm then going to go plus 20 plus 20. c is equal to 38. So that's our c value. Let's substitute the m and the c value. So therefore, y is going to be equal to negative 10x plus 38. And that's the equation of the tangent that we've been asked about. Question number 14. A movement, the movement of an object past a fixed point. So again, fixed point, you've got to be thinking kinematics when you see that phrase in your exam. Kinematics. Um, after t seconds, it has this velocity. We've been trying to find out how long does it take to reach that particular acceleration. So let's start off with writing down our velocity. That's going to be 0 0.5 times t squared minus 2t plus 1. Just a reminder about our flowchart, we start off with the displacement. We then go down to velocity. We then go down to acceleration. And it looks like we've got the velocity. We've been asked about the acceleration, so we're going to have to move down our chart, which is differentiation. So acceleration in terms of t is going to be equal to the derivative of the above, and that's going to be t minus 2. So that's our acceleration formula. We're interested at when, or what the t value is when the acceleration is 2.8. So we know that the acceleration is 2.8. We're going to substitute that in and solve for t. So 2.8 is equal to t minus 2. We're then going to go plus 2 plus 2. t is equal to 4.8 seconds. So what that means is after 4.8 seconds, um, acceleration of that object will be 2.8 meters. We are now looking at question number 15, and we've been given a function which has a turning point when x is equal to 1. Um, so let's jot down all the information we know. So we know the original function fx is equal to 2x cubed plus bx squared minus 2. What the turning point tells us is the gradient or f dash x is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1. So what we need to do is we need a function or a gradient function. So we need to differentiate the one we've got here. So f dash x will be equal to 2, oh, sorry, 6x squared plus 2bx. And don't forget our, our goal, we're trying to find out what b is. We're now going to substitute both of these into the equation. So 0 is going to be equal to 6 times negative 1 squared plus 2b times negative 1. 
negative 1 squared is 1, which cancels that out. So 6 minus 2b. Um, 2b is equal to 6. We're then going to go divide by 2, divide by 2. And b will be equal to 3. And that there is the solution um, that we're looking for. Find the value of b. We are now up to question number 16. Use calculus to show. So it shows that word where you asked to demonstrate something that the line is the tangent to that particular function. Um, so what that means is we've got a, a positive parabola and we've got a positive line. So it's probably something like this. Um, if they were a tangent, that there would have the exact same coordinate and it would have the exact same gradient. So that's what we need to set out, try to mathematically prove. Um, so let's start off with our original function. So f dash x is equal to 4x squared minus x plus 4. The easiest thing to start off with is the gradient. So we know that m should be equal to 15. So that's what we know. So we need to find out, well, when is the gradient also 15 for the parabola? So let's differentiate f dash x is going to be equal to 8x minus 1. We know that the gradient, or f dash x, is 15. So 15 is equal to 8x minus 1. We're then going to go plus 1, plus 1. 16 is equal to 8x. Um, we then got divide by 8, divide by 8. And then x is equal to 2. So we've now figured out the first thing. So we know that x is going to be equal to 2. I forget we also already know the gradient so that means the last thing we need to figure out or show is the y value and that's nice and easy that relates to the original function and we know what x is equal to so we're going to substitute that into the original equation so if 2 is going to be equal to 4 times 2 squared minus x plus 4 that's going to become 16 oh gosh i just realized that x there should be 2, 16 minus 2 plus 4, that there gets us to 18. And that there confirms that y is equal to 18. So the only thing is, we're not really sure, we haven't explored the line, so we just need to check that that line would be true. So um, y is equal to 15x minus 12. Um, we know that y is equal to 18. So if we put that in, x should be 2. And then we've proved our answer. So 18 is going to be equal to 15x minus 12. We're going to go plus 12 plus 12. 30 is equal to 15x. Divide by 15. Divide by 15. X is equal to 2. And that confirms our answer. So that means both the tangent and parabola have a gradient of 15 at 2, 18. So that wraps up our little explanation. We are now looking at question number 17, and I've copied and pasted a bigger axis for us to look at while we're doing this question. So question number 17, the diagram shown is the gradient function. So as I said in the previous video, it's really, really important to figure out what graph you've got. We've got the gradient function, not the original function. We've been told the point zero, 0, is on the original function, and we've been asked to sketch the original function based on the information we have. So the first bit of information we have is we know the original function x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. That's the origin that they mentioned over here. Second bit of information we know is we know this gradient function is a positive parabola. If you think of f dash x, if you were, or is equal to x squared, a positive parabola, if you were to ever, um, oh gosh, that's the gradient function, if you were ever to integrate this, you would end up with some kind of cubic, and it would be positive. So we are dealing with a positive cubic, And the other bit of information we know is about the turning points of that cubic. Um, turning points. And at f dash x, when that is equal to zero, you've got turning points. In our graph, we can see we've got some at negative two, and I can't quite read that number properly, but it looks about a third of a box. So I'm going to say that is four over three. So I know that at that 
those points when x is equal to negative 2 and when x is equal to negative, or sorry, positive 4 over 3, that there are going to be our coordinates. Or oh, sorry, or our turning points. So I'm going to start off with our first point. So we know the origin, 0, 0. We know the graph has to go through there. We know it's a positive cubic, so it's kind of going to go up through that point and then down and then up again. Um, we've just got to make sure it's um, a bit more contracted. So there's our turning point. That's our maximum, which is in line with negative 2. And then we're going to have a minimum. Let's just say it's down here in line with 4 over 3. And we now really just connect the dots. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult to do this. Make sure you have a rubber on the exam. We're going to go up. We then have to go through the origin. We then have to have a maximum by 4 thirds, and then we've got to keep going up over there. So that has all the criteria. The graphs never have to be perfect to get your merit marks. Even with that little kink, I'd probably get it properly. The thing is, I've got the turning points at the right values, and it's a positive cubic, and it goes through 0, 0, the origin that we were told that it goes through. And now on the final question, question number 18 of this 2017 merit questions. Um, an object can move in either direction on a straight track at a constant acceleration of negative 4. So straight away we've got the acceleration. That there is going to be equal to negative 4. And um, the, the idea of um, acceleration or this keyword of fixed point coming up, straight away I'm thinking kinematics with this question. Um, when the recording of the object begins, it is 12 centimeters away from the point. It is moving away from the point. It didn't give us the direction, and it has a velocity of 6 centimeters um, per second. And we've been asked to find calculus to use the speed at 5 seconds. Um, so we've got the acceleration. Just a reminder, displacement differentiates to the velocity. Velocity differentiates to the acceleration. This time around, we're going from acceleration to velocity, which means we need to integrate. So the velocity or the speed is going to be equal to negative 4t plus c. And there's an important bit of information in the question. We've been asked, or we've been told, when it begins, so begins means t is equal to 0, the velocity is equal to 6. So we're going to substitute this information to find out the full velocity equation, and again, C is just going to end up being that 6, but this is just to show us that 6 will be equal to negative 4 times 0 plus C. That's 0, so C is equal to 6, which means the velocity of the full equation will be negative 4T plus 6. Once we've done that, we can now substitute that. So we care about the velocity or the speed up to 5 seconds, so we know that t is equal to 5, so we're going to substitute this in to find out the velocity after 5 seconds. So the velocity after 5 seconds is going to be equal to negative 4 times 5 plus 6. That there is going to be negative 20 plus 6, which comes to negative 14 meters per second. And I thought it was a bit weird, I was like, oh, there's a negative velocity, how does that work? And what that probably suggests it probably goes back to that it can move in either direction so it's probably moving kind of away um, or backwards um, instead of forwards. That wraps up all the merit questions from the 2017 exam. Hopefully you found the video useful. Keep practicing.